So this is a video in response to a few people asking for an equivalent sort of video uh, like the in-depth look in the back of the Sega Mega Drive controller thingamajiggy synth thing and yeah they just wanted a, a bit more of a chat about what's going on on the inside. Uh, Josh commented on Patreon and a couple of people on the YouTube video so here it is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open it up and just have a look at what is inside. I built this, yeah, I, I actually think I built it in 2016, maybe even more, so it was four years ago, I think. And um, yeah, I built it after modifying, whew, I don't know, like I think I've modified at least like 10 speaking spells in my time. I sold a lot of them um, back in, yeah, quite a while ago. I was, um, I was skint, so I just sold everything I had. Uh, a few of them didn't work and uh, yeah, just sold them as untested circuit bend projects and they didn't sell for very much at all because obviously they were just untested circuit bend projects. But yeah, and, um, ooh, and yeah, it really got me into the speaking spell and stuff and then when I started doing modular synthesizers, you know, I started basically deciding to make toys and Game Boys and things into modular items so they were instead of just making single standalone items, you were building on a machine that would uh, just get bigger and bigger and be used with everything. And a lot of the beginning items and things that I did, uh, even back in from 2012, 2011 for me, uh, like they were, they were trying to be modular, but I just didn't understand how to do it. And a lot of the methods I used were very strange and silly. Uh, like um, there was, I had a Game Boy sequencer, I don't know where it is, uh, that was uh, basically a bunch of relays in the back. It was a heck of a lot of wire and remember it took me forever and it was basically just a load of 12-way switches that just chose between 12 relays to uh, sequence um, switches on circuit bent toys so they would sequence in time. Needless to say, uh, this is a kind of a progression of this idea. It's got banana jacks because um, in about 2015 to 2016, 2017, I, w I had a change of heart from Big Jacks and went to Banana Jacks. I, I, I went, um, yeah, Silver Faced and Banana Jacks. First Game Boy Triple Oscillator, uh, all of my synth was Banana Jacks. And then I realised it wasn't exactly what I was looking for and they were just not solid enough, they were not permanent enough and um, I ended up uh, just drilling, taking them out, drilling bigger holes and just putting big jacks everywhere again. This one, however, uh, never actually lasted to that point where I drilled them out. So it just, it just sat in the back in the cupboard and it never really got used much. And then today, I, I must be honest, uh, when I started doing this video a couple of days ago, I did decide I was going to put like jacks on these, but then I realized I've I've put these way too close together to actually be able to turn them into big jacks. So annoyingly, this one is going to stay uh, banana jack and I'm not doing it again because uh, I've already just um, redone all of the switch matrix at the back. But anyway, let's... So I very reluctantly uh, opened up the back of this. I was going to vow to never open this again as I'm scared I might break it and it might just uh, somehow stop working to blame the gods of the strange stuff. And I'm just trying to figure out where the red line is. So basically this is how I connected this ribbon cable to this um, to the back of the speak and spell. The screen is up here. So this is the top and you're looking down. This is pin one. Uh, you can see there's the red line. You can see there's a red line on this pin. So that's pin one and pin one actually has two chunks. And there goes pin two, pin three, pin four, all the way up to pin 13 on this way. And remember this way's up. So that side is pin one and pin one has two kind of uh, solder bits. You can see they're actually soldered together. So that's that. Uh, as for the circuit bends, we, we really need to track down the Casper Electronics documentation because it's amazing. It's really well put together and it's a shame that, you know, we can't seem to find it. So uh, if anybody has links of it, apparently it's on the Wayback Machine. Somehow I can't get onto it, but if somebody has any luck, then please let me know because basically all of the other wires are pretty much um, the mods that were found by, um, by Casper Electronics himself. Basically all I've done is I've used solid state PCB relays uh, that just basically switch these modifications on and off. And we'll have a look at that in a second. I'll just put this back together. So remember this, pin one to pin three, and this will correlate to the image 
uh, later in the video. So this is how the switch matrix works out and the voltages are very strange and if you ever do this I thoroughly recommend you to, to test the voltages because you get some very strange peaks. Obviously these are all running in sequence to each other because they're, they're going like boop 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 but the voltages are very strange. For instance the, uh, um, pin 6 uh, gives you a peak uh, when it when it blips of uh, like I seem to remember it was like plus 11 volts the rest of them minus voltage like minus 5 volts so I'm guessing that the reason number 6 was a positive voltage is because it's got the uh, on on there so it's probably plugging into a MOSFET or something but the rest of them uh, obviously it must be going low but yeah it was actually to the ground to the actual to the ground of the circuit of the actual speaking spell, it's giving negative voltages. There is a there is a transformer inside the actual speaking spell, so it's doing some strange things. And basically, it just um, I, I needed to get it done. I was really behind on this project, so I jumped back to the relay idea. And I'm actually really happy I went for the relay idea. So basically, this is pin six. Pin six is this one, and then pin seven, pin five, and pin four, pin eleven, pin ten pin 8 and pin 9 so these all correspond to those lines and if you connect it uh, to let's say pin 9 to pin 13 it'll actually send off and you'll see pin 13 is actually used for this so you use pin 13 for that that you use pin 12 for that and that you use pin 3 for that line and that line you use pin 2 for this line and this line and then you use pin 1 for this line and this line and then you end up getting the whole switch matrix how I did it with the relays, which is, you, I'm sure you can find a much nicer way of doing it. Uh, for instance, you could use uh, PCB relays, you know, the solid state relays. However, I had none of these lying around. You might be able to get away with using optocouplers, maybe. I tried using 4066s, but this kind of whole negative voltage problem just uh, made me jump to the relays straight away. And also transistors, I, that's the first idea I went to, was just using transistors to make the connection between these. But alas, I just... I just did run out of time and I, I knew that the relay idea worked, so I went for the relay idea. So for instance, if you want to make a connection between pin 8 and pin 13, you basically just do a relay. This is the image from that um, previous, from the other video. Uh, basically, it's just a 2M3904, the trigger input goes into it and it sends this pin of the relay to ground. And then this pin is wired up to 12 volts and then these are the two speaker spell pins, so you would solder pin 8 to that and pin 13 to that. Uh, a lot of people have commented about a uh, the flyback protection and stuff and adding a diode between. So the black lines there of the diode, you can use like a 1N4004 diode or something like that. And you put that there to stop um, uh, like um, uh, very quick uh, high voltage uh, surges, which could blow up the transistor. I'm tempted to say that in this setup it doesn't matter at all because I've used this setup without flyback transform uh, without flyback diodes for yonks I've had I have like this um this relay module inside my modular that's used pretty much constantly all the time and it's real props to the relay that is at Actually, being um, it's still working because basically what I what it is is a relay wave shaper and basically what you do is you plug in a uh, oscillator into the input and it basically makes the relay go up and down the same speed as the oscillator so rapidly really pat and it's probably most definitely by now gone past its use cycle however it's still running and then there's a piezo speaker wired it's glued straight to the relay and then that's a wave shaper in a way because you've got a it sort of what shapes the wave via a mechanical means needless to say this doesn't have a diode and it's three years old still working and i use it nearly every day and nearly every gig also there i have another module called the mega duck which basically is a hard mechanical mute on things and same thing no diode it's been working for three years every gig every practice nearly every day it works still so i have a feeling that this may be in a certain settings when things are being used closer to their like um you know their break there's the point where you know like they're on their edge of functioning but in this setup yeah you, you, you could do it if you want to be safe or if you want to live on the edge like me then just just don't bother just don't bother and i've got to be honest scenes that i sort of want this to work but I will probably put them on here, but right now I just really, 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 really cannot be bothered. 
and it worked fine. And like I said, with the other relays, it doesn't matter, but we'll see. So right in here, you can, you can see, I'll just zoom in on this. So as you can see, it's a mush of wires. It's basically just um, how to make a circuit without using any circuit boards. And I really like this method and I don't use it enough nowadays of actually using most of the panel to actually make the circuits. Like it's a really quick and easy way of making it up on the fly. If you look here with the buffers of the LEDs, these are basically just um, buffered LEDs at the end of metal uh, wires that just run across the whole row. And if you look closely on every single jack, on every single banana jack, get in focus. Every single banana jack you basically have, ooh, ooh, ah! Every single banana jack, you basically have a diode that goes over here that goes to the uh, up and down row, and that basically wires up to this coordinate LED, which is buffered. And the buffering, and that circuit is very simple. Basically, just use this same circuit minus the diode, but swap the relay with a LED. Maybe add a 1K between the, tw between the 12 volts and the LED. Yeah, definitely add a 1K between the 12 volts and the LED. You can see that, right, this is a, just this wire right here, the red wires that are connecting between are actually 12 volts. Going to the positive leg of the LED, if I move this a little bit, you'll see. And then there's a 1K going to the base, and then that's this is the uh, ground line. Exactly the same is happening for left to right. You can see there's a rail going along, some more diodes that are basically connected to it. And this is going again to a to a transistor that's doing the same same situation. So that's how I made the uh, lovely looking LEDs that did a coordinate. It's pretty snazzy. Over here is where the ribbon connector connects to this bit of protoboard, which basically on the other side of it has literally just got it's literally just got a bunch of wires that basically make a connection between these two, which are connected over to the relay uh, switch matrix. And basically I just made it up as I went and yeah, just, just, just soldered the wires to the corresponding pins and stuff. Just write down, use different colored wires, this, that, and the other, and you can, you'll get there, you'll get there. The other thing to note is the pitch CV modification. This is the pitch knob. It's the, just the same as a uh, Casper Electronics uh, documented pitch knob on the speaking spell. So check it out. And all I've done is literally wired a CV input to the middle leg via this, uh, but on the other side of the resistor that is documented in it. And that does it. It's very finickety and it takes a while to get a good kind of level of control voltage ability, but needless to say, all you need to do is just wire it straight to the middle. The sequencers are just Arduino codes. The Arduino code is basically like the eight channel one, and this sequencer is actually uh, in one of the zines. I think it is public if you check on the website, I need to remember, and and uh, basically this sequencer code, basically you get a clock in and it bounces between 16 uh, different legs and just basically turns them high, much like a 4017, kind of sequencer, a baby 10 sequencer, but it's got 16 steps. And basically these pins are basically directly connected to the jack outs. So you could, like, there's a video that I have that is of an eight channel, uh, an eight step sequencer. And basically, this is basically the same as that. It's like pretty much the same, except instead of uh, uh, potentiometers uh, connected to the uh, pins of the Arduino, it's just jack outs. And that just makes this go high and it uses it means you can trigger things with it. Needless to say, this isn't going to be an effective drum sequencer because you get gates instead of triggers on each of these steps. An easy way to solve that problem is by adding uh, at the end of all of these, basically you need to add an, an AND gate, which is an AND gate between this and the clock input. Basically what that does is it every time you get the clock and this, this trigger, it just turns on for that small amount of time. So if you have problems with a circuit and it just, if you have problems with a sequencer, it'll work on a 4017 sequencer as well. And you just hate the fact that, you know, you, you can't trigger drums like at one after the other, make an AND gate between the, that note, that step and the uh, clock input. This one that also has switches connected to it is basically the same thing again, except it's also going over from, from the actual Arduino pins to these switches, which has 
its own output. There's like just a just a bunch of things. So if you follow the video that I did on the eight step keyboard sequencer and just swap the potentiometers, for instance, for either switches or jack outs, you've basically got this sequencer right here. So I hope that made sense. Just me trying to explain what's going on in the back and hopefully you can, you can um, fit in the in-between things. Because in the end of the day, hacking is all about adventure and experimentation. So, you know. So this right here is the stupidest, absolutely stupidest circuit on this. It's completely, completely pointless. And I do not have a clue why the heck I did it like this. But this kind of just shows that there is more ways to skin a cat. I don't even know if that saying is allowed anymore, is it? Is it allowed? But there's one more than one way to skin a cat and like, uh, you can do things the wrong way and the long-winded way. There's nothing wrong with it. It still works, it still gets you there. There's obviously gonna be some people being like, why did you do it like that? You should have done it like this, blah, blah, blah. But you know, that's fine. It's part of the learning process and stuff. And obviously I just couldn't figure out what, how to do this solution. And I just don't understand why I couldn't figure it out because it's the easiest problem. Uh, I don't know how I did it. So basically what happens is these Arduinos <laughs> kind of just um, turned these relays on and these are little little tiny little relays that are, are, are like um, acting as switches uh, for the circuit bends, the Casper electronic circuit bends and these relays are ERR201A0500 and basically they're really tiny little relays that only need like five volts to kind of flick them over. They're very friendly to use and I've got to remember which legs which I use them a lot. I use them in the Furby organ to turn on the Furbies. I use them in this, that, and the other. Really nice little uh, little relays. And basically what these do, like I said, uh, um, I pretend to be the switch on a circuit bent cast, uh, on a circuit bent speaking spell. So these uh, respond to the switches down here. Uh, so this switch sends five volts in this. Let's not talk about this because this is stupid, but basically what it does is it sends five volts into the Arduino, which tells the relay to turn on. I could have just uh, not bothered with the Arduino and just sent the five volts from the switch to the relay. Why did I do that? Why did I put a, an Arduino in between these two things? I think it's because I had a bit of an extra plan that I never actually uh, kind of did. Uh, if you look, there's also a CV input. So the CV input also goes into the Arduino and is summed with the switch. And I have no idea because you still don't need the Arduino. What you could do is just wire these two via diodes or even just wire them directly to the relay. It wouldn't make a difference. I think it's, I did this this way so I could swap it around. So if for instance, the switch was on, the CV input would turn the relay off. But if the switch was off, the CV input would turn the relay on. And the quickest and simplest way for me of doing that, there are simpler ways, uh, but was doing the Arduino. It's perfectly possible, but I never actually implemented that. So it's a bit of a waffle of, uh, a rather waffle of a circuit. It's a super waffly circuit. It really doesn't make sense. So yeah, there's just a little bit more insight into what's going on in the back. I may have um, created more questions than answered but hopefully there was some things of help and use in this video and it wasn't all just like, what, what was it all about? But yeah, that's basically what is going on in here. It's just interfacing uh, rather common speak and spell circuit pens. So if we can find in the comments a nice reliable source of these old pieces of, pieces of documentation by people like Casper Electronics and stuff about the circuit bends and the good, you know, useful ones like loop and hold and tone in speaker spells, then it's, the, it's just about putting the puzzle together and uh, you'll be able to get it to work. Best of luck to you.